guys, hello hams. In today's episode of The Art of Engineering, we're gonna take the trusty Hermes Light 2 and we're going to get it to do FT8. Now, for those of you that don't know what FT8 is, the way I explain it to non-ham type people is FT8 is the mode that's most like playing the pokies, or for you Americans, we'd call them uh, slot machines. I also use the metaphor of fishing for this mode because it's kind of like throwing out a line and seeing what you catch. Sometimes you get the big fish, the DX stations, and sometimes you get the little fish, the people that are just around the corner. But either way, you get that little shot of dopamine. Up until now, all my FD8 has been happening via my QRP Labs QDX transceiver, and it's been a great, and very reliable piece of equipment. But setting up the Hermes Light 2 was a little bit more technical because whereas the QDX from QRP Labs operated through a USB, getting this thing took quite a bit of mucking around with virtual audio cables and all that good stuff. So I'm going to show you how all that happens. As we all know, my PC and IT type skills are virtually nil, but this is my take on, or my understanding of what's happening in this system, and that is that we run the Hermes Light off an ethernet cable. So that's my uh, Wi-Fi extender there, and we have an ethernet cable running from the Hermes Light down to uh, my Wi-Fi. I'm actually running it through a switch, but let's pretend we have two ethernet ports on my Wi-Fi extender, and so, or on my router, we've run um, the Hermes light on the Ethernet so it can be seen on the network and we've also got our PC connected to the network so it can see the Hermes light. So this is our Hermes light connected to our antenna, connected to the uh, Ethernet and this is our PC. Now, now the PC is running a program called Thetis and that's an SDR software. Really all of the uh, radio stuff is happening within the software. So amazing stuff happening here. Now Thetis has a section in it called VAC and that stands for a virtual audio cable because we're not actually plugging into the Hermes light we're not getting anything from that so it's all happening within the PC by using the virtual audio cable that's allowing Thetis the software that we're using to see our blue Yeti uh, mic and also to send sound off to our monitor or our speakers on our computer so that's all happening within Thetis and our PC. Now, trying to do digital modes like FD8 and to run the digital software, we need to add some software and do a little bit of a jigging around. I think that's the technical term for it. To get WSJTS, which is the software that we use for our digi modes, to communicate with Thetis and to get things to happen. You'll need a couple of programs, and I've written them down here because my uh, brain box can't keep anything inside it. And one of the things we need to do is we need to have rig control. So we need WSJTS to speak to Thetis to get the Hermes light to switch bands and to do what we need it to do. So what we need to do that is a thing called a virtual serial port. It's a piece of software, but it's emulating a serial uh, connection between these two um, softwares that are operating within the PC. I'm going to do that in red. Okay, so that is, I'll draw the arrow over here, our VSP, um, and that's what the software is actually called, and it's called a virtual serial port. So that's our virtual serial port connecting the two. That's a piece of software that we need to configure. And the other connection that we need is WSJTS can't use the virtual audio cable that's in Thetis, as far as I can tell. So the solution to that is another virtual audio cable, and the name of that program is called VB um, Virtual Audio Cable. When WSJTS is sending the FT8 signal for transmit, that goes via this virtual um, audio port, and when it's sending stuff back to the program to decode, same deal. 
two extra pieces of software that need to be added and configured to get this to work with digital modes. I'm only doing this to show you, when I actually show you the setup for this and how I've got it set up, how you'll understand why we have the extra bits that we have. Hope that has helped, hope that hasn't confused and if there's any IT type people out there that want to correct me on this, drop it in the comment section below. But this is kind of my understanding of what's happening. Let's get back over to the PC and I can actually show you how I've got it set up. Now, credit where credit is due. I always like to, if I've found resources online that have really helped me out, to point you in that direction rather than just rehashing what they've done because I think that's a very disingenuous thing to do. Certainly adding to what other people have done is a good thing, it's a service to the ham community, but just basically pillaging and robbing other people of their material is probably an issue. So big thank you and 73 to November 2, Mike Delta X-Ray uh, for his YouTube channel and his description of how to get this to happen. Now, I'm promising you, uh, in your circumstance, you may come up against some issues. I certainly came up against a few things that I needed to play around with because everyone's running maybe different versions of Windows. Everyone might have different uh, port setups, etc., etc. So I'm going to show you a few things that uh, I came up against when I was doing the setup. It took me a little while to get it all to happen. But trust me, if you um, start with that site, certainly the download of the virtual serial port and also the virtual audio cable, the VB virtual audio cable, the N2 MDX YouTube channel below his video. And I will put a link to that video below my video so you can find those software links. And I would say a very good place to start would be to watch that video. It's not terribly long and it'll really get you uh, in a good position for the setup. But watch my video too, because I'm going to uh, point out some of the issues that I came up against, and that may help you out if you uh, strike uh, difficult circumstances. Okay, folks, so we've downloaded our software as advised. We've got our virtual serial port. We've got Thetis, obviously. We've got WSJTS. Uh, I'll put a link down below for the uh, software, for that software as well. But if you know anything about FD8, that seems to be the go-to software for uh, working digi modes. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to look at how we actually get the Hermes Light 2 to talk to a WSJTS and get us some digi modes happening. What we need to do is we open up our visual serial port. It's going to say uh, license not found. Um, don't click yes because it's asked for your a registration. Now you might want to get virtual serial port for free. Uh, I think the 32-bit version is free. I don't know if it'll work with this. We're going to see how this goes. Have a look around for a free virtual serial port that might work. If it doesn't get me out of trouble, I'll pay the 25 bucks to uh, to get this thing working. At the moment, I'm in a two-week trial. What we need to do is we need to go device create. And then we need to go over here. The device type is going to be a pair. And we're going to say next. And we want to go from COM port 1, which is the port that the Hermes is operating on, to COM port 2. And we say finish. Now, if you're having difficulties, so we know that's working because if you look here, COM port 1 to COM port 2, it says down here, pair is initialized and OK. Now, I have had problems with this not working. And it would say COM port 1 to COM port 2, get lost because it's being used or whatever. Um, sometimes because it's, it's because Thetis is actually on. But sometimes it's just said get lost. So what I've done is... I've jumped in, um, I'll just jump up here. I've jumped into Device Manager and I've gone to um, Ports and I've changed this port. If I right click on this and go Properties um, and then go to Port Settings and then Advanced. Um, at the moment it's on COM port 1. You can change that to another COM port like COM port 3 and then and then set up your virtual serial port from COM port 1 to COM port 2 and it would normally let you do it. So if you ever get in trouble, drop down that, change it to a 3, go OK, do the um, COM port 1 to COM port 2 virtual serial port and then jump back in here, change that back to COM port 1. But uh, we didn't have that problem this time, but in the past I have had that problem. So that might get you out of problems. But that's the first thing we need to do. Now this COM port 1 to COM port 2 is going to be what gives us our rig control with WSJTS. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. So we just minimize that. So that's running in the background now. We open up Thetis. Okay, now in setup for Thetis, when this is set up for uh, operating with the 
Blue Yeti, we'd have Microphone Yeti there, and I would have it on the Sony NVIDIA TV screen, and that would be ready to go, and we would have that enabled. But we want to actually get this to work with our um, virtual um, audio program, which I've been very remiss not to show you. This is the other piece of software that you're told to download. And at the moment, um, there's going to be a problem. The problem that I encountered was that over here, and this is also virtual audio, and remember, I have to make sure I change this back to um, Sony NVIDIA as well, or I have problems. But at the moment, that's muted. Now, if that's muted, it's not going to transfer the audio from Thetis. So that was one problem that I did encounter. So we'll minimize that. So that's running in the background as well, and that's what passes audio signals for the FT8 or whatever digital mode you're working um, backwards and forwards between WSJTS and the Thetis software, which is what's running the Hermes. So it says there's another um, instance. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say no, because we've already got it down here. We minimized it. Okay, so that's good. So we're going to go into setup. We're going to make sure that in our setup, we, we select our VB audio cable and our VB audio cable. Okay, both of those need to be the VB audio cable choices. Then we're going to jump over here to serial network and we're going to go COM port 1, 38400, parity none, data 8, stop bit 1, and you've got to make sure that that's ticked and enabled. Apply, OK. That's all good. Then we jump into WSJTS, get that to open. And you can see now that that's working because straight away it's jumped into rig control. Um, I can't see my menus. Ah, we've got to click here. Now, if it wasn't working, you would go File, Settings, and you would need to set this up. So I want to show you how I've got this set up. Radio, TS480, Kenwood TS480, or Kenwood uh, TS2000 will do. Comport 2. Now, remember on um, the Hermes software, we had it set to Comport 1. And we've got that virtual serial port set up. And um, so COM port 2 is where our WSJTS software finds what Thetis has to tell it. 38400 uh, board rate, default, 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 cat programming. Now, if this doesn't have COM port 2 here, you can get it to ungray itself by clicking another button, select the COM port 2, and then go back to cat. You need to be in cat control for this to work. Front mic is the most common one to use. Um, none, none. And if I hit test cat, it should go green if it's working, and it is. So we'll just go OK. So that's all working as it should. Um, are we getting anything uh, being decoded? At the moment, no. So that might be a problem. Let's jump over here and have a look. Virtual audio cable that's up the volume a little bit. Um, let's have a look at what's happening on VB Audio. We're not getting anything over here at the moment. It's not, it's not communicating like it should. So what might be happening there, because that should be jumping over here where it says input levels. That's for um, receive and transmit uh, uh, um, going backwards and forwards between Thetis and WSJTX, and it's not working. So let's jump back into Thetis and see if our virtual audio cable has, oh, you know, it's not working because I haven't hit start. Hit start. Ah, so now when we look at uh, our um, VB audio cable, you can see stuff's happening here. So that's good. So minimize that. Uh, we'll get our WSJTS running in the foreground. And already we've got a station coming up. And it is 883MQ at a minus two. I'm going to enable transmit. My antenna is connected. It's on the correct antenna, which is the vertical L. And we're going to go, uh, let's click on it and go, let's go. Now you can see here that that gain is way too high. It's gone red. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wind that back a little bit on the AF gain. And that hopefully will get it to behave itself. And I've got a response, HA3MQ. And there you have it, folks, a W4 India Juliet in the States, 15,247 kilometers, 5 watts. And that is the incredible signal-to-noise ratio that this mode, developed by Joe Taylor, PhD in physics, 
um, interested in radio and astronomy and just an amazing gentleman and he is a ham hence the uh, call sign on the WSJTX program it is by Joe Taylor his call sign Kilo One Juliet Tango and God bless you Mr. Taylor for coming up with this ingenious piece of ham software and this wonderful new mode that so many people get so much enjoyment from and yes I know there's haters out there but even as a, a person that loves to send CW, playing the slot machines is sometimes a fun thing to do. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. I hope this has helped you get your Hermes light onto FT8. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to retire my QRP Labs QDX because I built it as a kit and I really love it. So it will still be put into service at other times and uh, i am just enjoying all of the fun that's happening now in this shack and all the opportunities to operate but the hermes light has been a real game changer because the noise reduction on it is just amazing and i'm also able to operate now on all the bands so i was originally going to try and earn all of my band by building a rig for each one but uh, when I saw what the Hermes Light was doing and the fact that you had that opportunity to actually put it in a box yourself and play around with modifications like the last video where I got myself on CW um, by building a, a rudimentary here, I could get some side tone happening and whatnot. That's what I find exciting about ham radio. Anyway, 7-3 and I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.